Warriors, quick announcement. I am very excited to tell you that Just One Dime will be at South by Southwest in March 2020, Austin, Texas. Now, if you don't know what South by Southwest is, it's an annual conglomerate of film, interactive media, music festivals, and conferences and it takes place every year mid-March in Austin. It started in 1987, but to give you perspective, last year they had over 150,000 attendees. We got accepted for the booth in the Startup Village, but we applied to be on two high-level platforms for 2020, the conference panel and the education panel. So to get accepted, we need your vote literally. All you have to do is navigate to my bio, do it in your own style, click on the link tree, vote for the Diamond Me. That's it, so click below, there's two links, you're gonna see a little thumbs up on the left side. Just click vote up and that will help us to get in. If you feel like we've given you a ton of free content, do this for us. Back to the show. Off the mic, I just tipped. Off the sidewalk, I don't run. I just cruise. Come against me and you'll lose. Woo! Where did my drugs sit when I need it? Hey, hey, party people. This is April Bingham coming at you live from Just One Dime headquarters with our CEO, Seth. I am our copywriter, office goth, high prophetess of Seth himself, and today we're going to be asking him some questions. First off, who do you think you are, Seth? Who do you think you are spreading all this knowledge for free, for paid? Like, what makes you, you? How did you get here? Love the question, and thank you so much. And I think that question needs to be asked of more people in the world. Like, who do you think you are? Like, why the heck would you listen to Seth Denny? Like, why? And I think I can answer that question with one answer, one phrase, but I'll exp expound on it. Because I've suffered. Mm -hmm. I, I really think that's why people resonate with the message that we bring, is every Just One Nine Warrior, their story relates to my story and mine to theirs because they know what it's like to be at the bottom of the barrel. They know what the bottom of the barrel smells like, they know what it feels like, they know what it's like to have no direction to go, but to look up. Yeah. Like they know what that's like, and I know what that feels like, and I think that is the most important thing for helping someone to have a message that can actually change lives. Creating how-to videos on YouTube has become the number one way we've grown our coaching business. Mm -hmm. It's just literally teaching people what I'm doing. Yeah, so and tutorials I, are where it's at. Exactly, and, and most people, they go to YouTube searching how to do this, how to do that, and it's funny, a lot of people say, I'm gonna start my YouTube channel. Yeah. I'm gonna start it, I know I'm gonna do it. I've seen so many people say this, but they never start. Mm -hmm. And my friend kept telling me, he, he had a growing YouTube channel, he actually, I managed him when I was at Apple. He left Apple, fired his boss, mm -hmm. to do what he loves. I followed him, yeah. and later did the same, and he keeps going, Seth, why don't you start sharing this on YouTube? You have so much to share. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I'm happy. I'm, I'm doing great. I'm selling Amazon. Things are great. He's like, Seth, okay, fine. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start telling everyone I can about your YouTube channel. Yeah. I'm going to start posting it in my videos. I'm going to embarrass you because it was really bad. Mm -hmm. He embarrassed me as a good friend. Yeah. You know, faithful to the wounds of a friend. That's, that's what friends do. Exactly. He embarrassed me into doing it. And so I did my first video and slowly the video took off, took off, took off, took off. And then I realized, wait a minute. People are hungry for this. Mm -hmm. And then it just grew from there. And that's just another example of that exponential growth, right? Because, you know. Doubling a dime is 20 cents, doubling that is 40 cents, but right. eventually you get to 25, 50, 100, et cetera. Yeah, and, so that's, just, it, and you make such a great point. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about YouTube is you can do a, a video on Facebook and it lasts for a while, but then it gets buried. Yeah. But on YouTube, it takes on a life of its own. And if you're really meeting a need, I've had videos I posted and they only got 300 views. Yeah. Then six months later, all of a sudden we get 10,000 because all of a sudden it became a topic of interest in the world or someone who's an influencer shared it with a lot of people and then it just grew. So right now as we're talking, people are online watching these YouTube videos. Their lives are benefiting. We've had people, yeah. I'm almost embarrassed to say it, do 20,000 a month mm -hmm. just from what an 18 year old, 20,000 a month, mm -hmm. just from watching the free YouTube just video. Free. That has nothing to do with the five courses and membership and all that. Right, so what, 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 do, you gotta, what do you have to say to people? Like what's, what's, if you could condense it all down into three sentences, which I know is hard for you anyway, because we both <laughs> like to talk, so. <laughs> What's, what's the main takeaway? Yeah, takeaway is take every, I know whoever's watching this that you've suffered, either greatly or, or mildly. And if you think you haven't, you're in denial. So everyone's suffered, period. Yeah. Take that suffering and let it turn you into an amazing person, the person you wanna be. You can, mm -hmm. it just requires a shift of, instead of me remaining a victim, I'm gonna become a conqueror by allowing my pain 
to help me change and then I'll be able to change others. And there's no feeling better than that in life. I think that is the most, I, I know I maxed out on my word quota. <laughs> so I'll finish the sentence and I'm done. I wasn't gonna say it. <laughs> that is the most important takeaway I have even from this. Like if I was to teach my younger self, that's what I would say to Seth. Nice. How do you, how did you rather, how did you figure out who you wanna be? Cause I'm right, like I'm 29. Yeah. I just rolled from my quarter life crisis into my I'm almost 30 crisis. So it's just like, I have money in a stable job now, what do I want to do with it? How do yeah. you figure out what kind of person you wanted to be? Yeah. How'd you narrow that down? I love how you use the word crisis twice yeah. because I went through a crisis. I call it the wandering stage. And for Christmas, my oldest daughter, Audrey, she got me this mug and it said in Tolkien Elvish, which she had stenciled onto the mug, mm. all Nerd. who wander are not lost. And yeah. when I got it, I just started crying because it reminded me, uh, she got me, she understood the struggle I was going through those years. And it just, it, it told me something that it's okay to feel lost for a while. Because sometimes you have to be really, really lost before you can be found. So the first thing I would say is I had to accept that this is part of that journey mm -hmm. and not resist it and fight it and act like everything's bad. No, something's changing on the inside. So that's my first thing was I had to accept it. Second, I went back to my roots. Mm -hmm. When I was 11 years old, I started a yard sale and I tried to sell a bunch of stuff and no one bought it except my brother who felt sorry for me. So he went in over to the, our big Volkswagen van and he got coins from the tray and he didn't even use his own money. <laughs> and he bought some of my stuff because he felt sorry for me. But I remembered that. And I remember going to school with a little pack of Smarties and I gave away two and I traded and bartered for dessert and quarters and came back with a $5 super fancy. I still remember the smell of it. It was like new, yeah. five, like multiple flat pencil case. Like it was amazing. And my brother looks at me and goes, you're an entrepreneur. I'm like, what is an entrepreneur? And I'm like looking up the dictionary to try to figure out what that is. So yeah. I went back to my roots. Somehow my childhood reminded me of who I instinctually was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And I began to pour my heart into that. Yeah. And you know, to be honest, I, I didn't just one day have an epiphany. It was slowly over time mm -hmm. as I realized, I don't know what I want to do. It gave me freedom to find out what I should be doing. Nice. So did you model yourself after anyone? I mean, you got you, got you but yeah. did you look up to anybody during this? during this period, yes. even now. Yes, know, and, and it's really funny because this guy looks nothing like me. He's from a completely different world. Yeah. His name is Jack Ma. He was a school teacher. He was poor, and people are not paid well in China at all as school teachers, and he loved teaching. But one day he thought, I could start a business. I see an opportunity. So he took that passion he had for children, mm -hmm. and he turned it into passion for people, and he created to what is known today as Alibaba, which is a multi-billion dollar holding company of so many companies. Yeah. So I would say Jack Ma, probably more than anyone has influenced who I am today. To see his journey on the other side of the world mm -hmm. in much more difficult circumstances. Yeah. What the heck, I'm in the land of opportunity, America. Why can't I do that? Yeah. So if you, I can have a, a modicum of his success, mm -hmm. I'm happy. Nice. So how do you get over, and I know that you're, um, you don't do things out of guilt, how do you get over the guilt if you're, um, especially, I know, I know uh, a lot of people in my generation suffer from this. It's just like, even if you have the means to do something, yeah. they're just like, I seem to not be moving even with everything I have. How yeah. do you, how do you step past that? Cause you just like, you have an advantage. Yeah. There's no shame in using it. How right. do you get over that shame and use it if you, if you care that much about people to help yeah. people, how do you yeah. get over it? I think, and this is going to sound weird, Yeah. I think by embracing the guilt, mm -hmm. like really asking myself, what does that come from? Yeah. And I think for a lot of us, it comes with based on how we were raised mm -hmm. or expectations of others put upon us. Totally. And, and it doesn't excuse my wrong actions at all. But I am free from those people. Like mm -hmm. I don't answer to them. Yeah. So why am I still trying to please them? And so I had to get to a point where I just said, I'm done trying to make people happy. Mm -hmm. I gotta take care of me. And yeah. now I can help people because I want to. Yes. And there's freedom in that. Yeah. But I can not do that broke. Yeah. I would rather be rich and help poor people than broke. Like people are like, oh yeah, you need to you know, give away all your goods and feed the poor. And I think they abuse that passage from scripture mm -hmm. and try to apply it to everyone. Well, that was a unique situation with a guy who really struggled with worshiping riches. That's what was good for him. Yeah. But what about all the people in not just scripture, but in history who had a lot of money and used it for good? Like there's so many people today who are doing that. Why can't I? And so that motivated me like crazy. Let me ask you this last thing. Why shouldn't I fire you if I've got a great business idea and I start rolling with it? 
why am I, why, why am I not firing my boss right now? Wow, that is a good question. I think you've almost stopped me, but not quite. <laughs> Just give me a second. Yeah. <laughs> because you're damn good and I need your help. And so I'd rather you help me take on the world and I think we can do so much more together yeah. versus not. Nice. That's why. Found it. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's my boss. This is Just One Dime. That's our time. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm April. That's Seth. We'll see you warriors soon. See you guys. Take care.